Okay, welcome back. Uh, where we last left off, we had created our list view control that shows our pictures, and we just created the file upload control. Now we're going to have to write some code that when the user clicks the button, will save the image that the user selected to the images folder, and then we'll also want to uh, update the list view control to uh, show the user the new image. So, let's get right into it. I'm going to go into design view, double click on our button here, and then I'll click uh, that'll create the button click event. So, first thing that we need to do is check if the user has selected a file from that file upload control. If they have, we're going to save it. Uh, if not, we're going to we're going to throw some kind of error. Uh, we'll keep it simple. Maybe create a label control that will say, um, "I'm sorry, there was a mistake." So, if the name of our file upload control is uh, fu images, file upload images dot has file, then we're going to save it. Then do images dot save as, and here we're going to create a path. We're going to save it directly to this images folder. Okay, so I'm on a local server. I'm going to save it with an absolute path. Uh, if you're on a website, you'll want to save that relative to the root of your site. So the path for me is going to be c colon slash website slash users can upload images slash img and then we're going to append uh, the name of the file so we can grab that by our, the id of fu images dot file name okay. so if the name of their file is john it's going to save it directly to the img folder and the name of the file will be john So the next step, uh, once again, I'm doing this from scratch, so I'm kind of thinking off the top of my head. The next step is we're going to create uh, some new elements in our XML file so that the list view can can pull a new item uh, and reflect that new image. So, that's file, I'm going to do that. Then, let's do this. Um, dim file as new XML document. Uh, a new XML document, that's just an XML file. So we're going to do file.load, and once again we're going to create a path. And the path is going to lead directly to this XML file, so that we can load it and manipulate it. Images, uh, and then the name of the file, and the short memory, photos.xml. Photos. So we've loaded the image now, we need to add some new elements. If you come in here, what we're going to do is we're going to create a new item. So we need a new user tag, a new photo tag, and then a new text node for inside of our photo tag. Okay, so uh, let's do then the user tag as XML element equals file.create element. And in here we're going to just create a string, and it's going to be equal to users, because that's what we're creating, that, that user tag. And next we're going to do the same thing with the photo tag. And the name of that one is photo. Okay, and we'll just dimension this as the photo tag. Keep it simple. Alright, we've created those elements. Now we need to actually create that text node. So let's do dim the photo text node as XML text, and that's going to be equal to file dot create text node. And inside here, uh, we could do a string if we wanted. Uh, here, we're going to actually create our path. So we'll do img slash and let's grab the name of that file file name that the user selected. So that will lead us directly to images slash and the file name that the user uploaded. Okay. So that should be sufficient. So we've created this text known, but we haven't told it where it needs to go. So we need to tell it you need to go inside of the photo element. So we can do that by photo tag dot pens child 
and then here we're going to do photo text mode. Okay? Not too hard, huh? So now we have the photo tag. The next step is we need to tell the photo tag you need to be inside of the uh, the wrapping user tag. So we're going to do somewhat of the same thing. We'll do user tag dot append child the photo tag. We got that. So now we've created essentially we've created a new one of these. Okay. But we have to tell it because it doesn't inherently know. We have to tell it where is it going to go. Well, we want it to go at the very top. So we're going to grab this uh, this root element and prepend it to the very top. Okay. So how can we do that? Well, we'll do file our XML document dot. I believe it's called document element. Yep, that gets our root tag. File dot document element dot prepend child and we're going to append, prepend the user tag, okay? And remember, the user tag contains all of it. The user tag uh, has the photo tag and the text node uh, as children. So, that looks good. The very last step is we've updated our XML file, now we need to save it. So, file.save, and we're just going to grab this path again. That quotations. And you know what? I think that's it. So let's run this in the browser again. And uh, I might have made a mistake. I kind of hope I do because uh, you're apt to make a couple mistakes if you're new or so. You can see how I work through them. But we'll check. I'm going to go into my desktop. Grab another generic image and click upload. Okay, now we haven't written any code that will give the user some feedback, and uh, you definitely want to do that. So we'll do that uh, maybe in the uh, the next video. So let's go in here and we come back to our solution, and uh, we have this alert that's telling us the file has been modified. So let's check it out. Okay, so check it out. We have prepended this new user tag to the very top. And I must have clicked it twice by accident. So, let's refresh this. Let me see what I did wrong. <coughs> User, photo, photo, photo. This should be right. Let's, uh, let's move along. Now we need to create some feedback for the user, and then we also need to refresh that list view control so it shows our new item. So what we're going to do here is underneath our button, let's create a break, and then we're going to add a label. We'll call it uh, label response. And here, uh, if the file is uploaded successfully, we'll create uh, the text property to be something like congratulations. And uh, alternatively, if it doesn't work, we want to let them know that there was some kind of an error. Okay. So, we're going to save it, and then, and you know what, I'm going to save this for the next tutorial. Uh, stick around, and we'll go through the last lesson.